สาธุสาธุสาธุนามามิบุญดังกุณะสักรันตัมสันตาสัดาหุนตุสุขียเวราขายุจิกุญจุสักโลดุกันดงกัจฉันติสัมเบมาเรนัมอาหันเจมสมันตาจักรวาลิสุอัตรากัจฉันตุเดวตังสัตดัมมังมุนีราจัสเสุนันตุสักเกมุกเกดัมดัมมัสสเวนคาลุอายังบดันตังดัมมัสสเวนคาลุอายังบดันตังดัมมัสสเวนคาลุอายังบดันตังนโมตัสสะบาเกวะตุอะเรหะตุสัมมาสัมบุญเดนเซนโมตัสสะบาเกวะตุอะเรหะตุสัมมาสัมบุญเดนเซนโมตัสสะบาเกวะตุอะเรหะตุสัมมาสัมบุญเดนเซดุขังดุขะสมุปปาดัมดุขะสัจจะติกขมังอาริยันชัตตังกิขังมังกัมดุขโภเพสัมกามินัมเอตังโคสเรนังเกมังเอตังสเรนมุตตมังเอตังสเรนมังกัมเมสัมบดุขะพมุนจตุสาดุสาดุสาดุ Dear friends in the Dhamma, today we are going to discuss one of the main topics in Buddhism, the Four Noble Truths. All Buddhist doctrines depend on this topic, which is the Four Noble Truths. And uh, the understanding of four noble truths depend on how far we have understood the dependent origination. Both of them are interrelated. Both of them are very important. Here, first of all, we should understand the message in short. What would they explain? Buddha always explains that what he explains, he says, I explain only two things. What they are? Suffering and the cessation of suffering. That is the only thing that he has explained in his lifetime for 45 years. And we also have the same thing have to explain to the world. And... Um, When we go forward on this path, we can understand how far we have gone on this path. How do we know it? Our happiness day by day should increase. How we know that we have achieved happiness? We are going on the path of happiness. What are the signs that we can see in our life? Anger is decreased. Anger is increased. And, uh, yes, very good, very good. There are three unwholesome emotions or unwholesome thoughts that disturb our peace of mind. They are roots, unwholesome roots. What they are? And greed. Yes, greed. Anger and delusion. Great anger and delusion. <coughs> These are the three unwholesome emotions which disturb our peace of mind. This is the sign 
whether we are happy or not. If we can day by day overcome these defilements, it means we are on the path of liberation. If these three unwholesome thoughts increase, it means we are away from real liberation, happiness, purification. In this situation, would you explain us little by little we should overcome these negative thoughts from our mind if we like us, if we really love us. This is the way how we take care of us. Especially, we should understand our mind and also we should take care of our mind like a pure, pleasant, beautiful flower. Don't give any chance to anybody to disturb your peace of mind, which is the most important thing in our life, is mind. And in this situation, as I mentioned before, there are some primary uh, things that we can do to overcome greed and anger. What we should do? Yes, practicing generosity is one of the ways that we can practice to overcome greed. That is one of the techniques. Yes, there are another thing that we can practice, practice to overcome greed, clinging or craving or attachment. Contemplating on impurity of our physical body. We think and we contemplate on our body, uh, physical body, when we understand what our body is, then gradually we can overcome attachment, craving or lust. It doesn't mean that we should away from our duties and responsibilities on behalf of our parents, children, other people, we should do our duties and responsibilities. While we are doing that, our attachment, craving or lust gradually decreases. That is the way, that is the thing that we should do as intelligent persons in this world. And as you mentioned before, to overcome anger, we should practice loving kindness as we regularly practice. We recollect as that may all beings be well, happy and peaceful. We think other success as our success. We think other success as our children's success. And in this situation, we are friendly. We see other world like our family, like our children. We are compassionate, we have sympathetic joy, we have no jealousy, then we develop these qualities in our heart. It means we gradually increase our happiness, inner peace, which is our main purpose of our life. <coughs> and according to Buddhism, it is not difficult to overcome greed and anger. <laughs> You know, when Buddha appeared in the world, there were some persons who had reduced, eradicated their lustful desire and anger for a long time. Even though they have practiced, they had practiced that path, they were not successful according to Buddhism. Buddhism has introduced the main defilement which disturbs our peace of mind. What is that? Yes, ignorance or delusion. What is the delusion that we have? After experience, we think still it is happening. After we experience something, we think yeah, still it is happening in the future. And also, when we experience something at the moment, we think it was here before we experienced. And also after experience, we think that it remains. That is one of the ignorances. And also, 
when we experience something in external objects, we think that we experience as it is. And uh, we don't know that the happiness or suffering arises according to our mental conditions. We think that suffering or happiness come from outside to our life. And when we see it intelligently, wisely, we can understand in the outside world there are only four primary elements, which they are yes, solid elements, fluid elements, yes, uh, heating elements, and windy or vibrating elements. These are the four elements which we can see in the outside world. But according to our mental conditions, we think, uh, this is Mr. Selvan, this is Mr. Fernando, this is Mrs. Nirosha, this is Mr. Uh, Sean in Florida, this is flowers, this is water, this is paper. We, um, we think that there are different things in the world. But when we think it in deeper level, we can find only four elements in the world. Yes, Pataviya, Potejo, Vayo. These are the four elements. But according to our condition, it doesn't mean that there are no something in the world. There are something. But it, the suffering or happiness doesn't come from outside. We create happiness or suffering according to our mental conditions. In the outside world, there are only these five fundamental elements. This is one of the ignorances that we have which disturb our peace of mind. If we can overcome this delusion, and that is the way that how we overcome suffering. And for that, Buddha has explained a path, mindfulness. Buddha says, mindfulness is the only way for the purification of beings. Satvana Visuddhya. Soka Paridhavana Samati Kamaya. Practicing mindfulness is the only way to overcome sorrow and lamentation. Nyaya Sadhika Maya. Practicing mindfulness is the only way to achieve wisdom. Nibbana Sachikiriyaya. Practicing mindfulness is the only way to attain enlightenment. When we are in mindfulness, automatically in our life, concentration and wisdom gradually increase. Then, day by day, we try to develop the duration of time that we live in the present moment with reflecting on impermanence. Actually, we have earned all these facilities to live in this moment with concentration and wisdom. Actually, these are the results, not only in this life, when we achieve these facilities, we have done a lot of merits and wishes in our previous lives. That is why we have received these facilities with Dhamma. And our main duty should be to develop to our concentration and wisdom living in the present moment with mindfulness. However, again, we are going to explain one by one. <coughs> First, we should understand the nature of the Dhamma. What Buddha explain? Buddha explain the world reality as it is. As we mentioned before, Buddha says very clearly, whether a Buddha appeared, appears or not in the world, this truth is forever. 
this truth is forever because this is the eternal truth there are some qualities in dhamma swakato bhagavata dhamma this dhamma is well expounded by the buddha sanditiko visible results akaliko immediately effective ehi pasiko call in one to come and see and also opanaiko opanaika means leading onwards pachattam verita bovinyo to be realized personally realized by the wise and these are the qualities of the dhamma actually these qualities are in the second chapter mr selvan i have written all those qualities in the second chapter <coughs> yes okay sorry second paragraph and uh, these are the qualities of the dhamma and uh, buddha says how suffering arises what are the reasons of suffering buddha has explained that is very important to know you should understand suffering from beginning to end from bottom level to upper level you know what are the sufferings in our day to day life that we face yes very good eh uh, jara vyadi marana jara means aging or decay eh uh, aging or decay aging eh uh, decay and uh, sickness sickness death eh uh, separating from what we like uh, association with what we don't like and these are also some things that we suffer okay why do we have the sufferings in this life what is the closest reason of the sufferings Craving. yes craving also one of the reasons but i ask you what is the closest reason i think sanand do not see i think it's because we are alive we are here so we're yes birth birth is the closest reason hmm birth okay because we were born we have these facilities it doesn't mean that for for our entire life we should suffer that is a sublime truth which describes us how we overcome these sufferings even though we have these sufferings buddhism never says that we should suffer until you die before we die we have a duty to overcome these sufferings that is why a buddha appears in the world that is why the buddha appeared in the world before we die according to our diligence courage we can overcome these negative negative feelings sufferings according to our courage dedication and intelligence and but is the closest reason of this suffering what is the closest uh closest reason of birth this is from the previous life bhava bhava means the process of becoming yes the process of becoming it says in buddhism bhava Mm-hmm. Bhava. Uh-huh. Bhava means the process of becoming. 
the process of becoming uh-huh. becoming bhav pachya jati jati pachya jara marana what is the reason of becoming the process of becoming yes klingin o upadana upadana o klingin is the closest reason of bhava or the process of becoming klingin yes upadana klingin klingin o upadana Upadana. Upadana is the closest reason of bhava or the, the process of becoming. What is the closest reason of upadana or clinging? Desire. Yes, desire. or trusna or craving uh, craving or tanha uh, tanha or craving desire attachment lust greed there are synonyms craving craving is the closest reason of clinging o padan what is the closest reason of craving ha eh? uvedana or feeling not only physical feelings there are six feelings through our six senses sometimes it may be positive sometimes negative good bad feelings and because of vedana or feelings <coughs> craving arises what is the closest reason of feelings past or impression impression eh yeah. impression of the closest reason of feelings it takes in buddhism pasta pasta or is pasta pasta in pali language pasta or impression is the closest reason of feelings feelings negative or positive and buddha says again what are the reasons of impression ha salaitana or salaitana or six senses actually even arant has six senses but here it says not just six senses six senses with ignorance now we see something we experience something we think the thing which brings us experience is outside now when we experience something our mind is fixed in outside if we can completely understand and comprehend this nature then as soon as we experience something outside we suddenly come to inside like you know when we go to the mirror as soon as we go to the mirror if our reflection is unpleasant we know very well i should clean here we never clean the mirror how about when we look at outside we always try to clean outside 
he doesn't mean that we should clean our houses, our cars, and we should do, but we always think that the suffering or happiness comes from outside. That is why always we criticize, we blame others. Uh, don't hate me. Uh, don't uh, uh, me get angry. Uh, uh, be silent, be, um, be clear, be uh, pure. And we always advise outside people because we think that they bring us suffering. And Salayatana six senses is the closer reason of passa or impression. What is the reason of six senses? Nama Rupa. Nama Rupa means mind and matter. Huh? Nama Rupa, mind and matter. It means our mind is fixed in physical things and mind. One day we should go away, we should overcome living in mind and body. We completely live in intelligence, understanding, comprehension after we enlighten. And uh, what is the reason of Nama Rupa? Uh, vinyana, uh, vinyana <coughs> or consciousness. Uh, consciousness is the closest reason of Nama Rupa for mind and matter. And the reason of Vijnana or consciousness is that mental formations or sankara, uh, sankara or mental formations. What is the main root? Sankara. Sankara, yes. Sankara. You know, it should have a uh, dot here, like this, in Pali alphabet. Mm-hmm. And uh, avidya, avidya or ignorance, uh, ignorance is the main root, the ultimate or bottom root. So what is the second one? Second one is Sankhara. Mental formation. Mental form, I'm sorry. Mental formation. Mental formation. Actually, all these twelve steps arise in a second. It has not time. When we see something suddenly, those twelve things have arised. If we have ignorance, we have no, no stop. According to our mental conditions, according to our ignorance, our mind is fixed in outside. And little by little, we should try to destroy the power of ignorance by practicing generosity, by practicing uh, loving-kindness, by practicing concentration, reflecting on impermanence, especially living in the present moment with mindfulness is the only way to overcome this ignorance. As much as... Have you any problem, Mr.? Oh, no, I just had a question. Like, after getting rid of ignorance, if we're still alive and we get rid of ignorance, we get rid of some of it, but not everything. For example, we get rid of ignorance, but we still have mental formations, consciousness, mind and matter, six senses, impression and feelings, but we don't have craving, clinging, the process of the coming, birth and, and death. That is going to get rid of it. If we are still living, and we get rid of ignorance. Is that correct? Uh, actually, when we have ignorance... No, when we get rid of it. 
No, but we, st- we still have six senses, we still have mind and matter, we still have consciousness. No, it means that I explained before you that even Arhantas experience something through his right. senses. Right. But we and he is different. What is the difference? So what yeah, so what I'm saying is we still when, have it, for example, for example, when we go to the mirror, now we know very well reflection is here. The, the, the reason of reflection is here. But how about uh, some pets, pets who go to the mirror? They think that the reflection and person is there. We are also like that. For example, when we see something outside, we think, we experience as it is. And we have no enough intelligence that this experience arises according to our mental conditions. Then our senses are different than the Arhantas senses. These sen- six senses, the common senses like we have. Right. But the Arhantas, Arhantas senses are different. What is the different? For example, a arhan, an Arhant may go to meet his parents. When he goes to the parent's house, he goes like we go to the mirror. Before we go to the mirror, we never think that my reflection is there. We know very well, as soon as I reach the mirror, the reflection arises there, appears there. But how about when we go to visit our parents? Yes, we think they are there. We are going to meet our parents who were before. But won't they feel happy? Won't they have feelings when they go see their parents and come, come back? Like number seven? Number seven? Yeah, they go and see their parents, they're happy. So they have feelings. Happiness arises in their side, parents' side, when Arhant goes there. But he also may be happy, but he knows very well that happiness arises at the moment. He knows very well happiness or feelings are impermanent. For example, when you have a headache, you may think that continuously I have headache, negative feelings. But that feelings every moment arises and ceases. When you think something which is happy, you are happy, you are not worry. And but because of our ignorance, we think that feelings comes continuously, but feelings are impermanent. <coughs> These feelings, you know, even Arhantas have appreciated the environment. Waterfalls, trees, flowers, rivers, they have appreciated. According to the common world, they have appreciated this jungle is very beautiful. This waterfall is very beautiful. This, uh, these birds are singing very well. They have appreciated. Buddha says, Nate kama yani chitrani loke. Beauty is not lust. Lust or suffering or greed arise inside. This flower is not lust. Lust arises inside. And if we can see it as it is, then we have no lust, greed, or attachment. 
and this everything everything is impermanent but because of our ignorance when we are ignorant we may think that everything is certain and our mental conditions our feelings our pressions craving everything we think as permanent sorrowful and egoless the reason is ignorant and as much as we can overcome ignorance we experience something outside but in first we are ignorant but suddenly we correct this misunderstanding suddenly we can overcome ignorance we have to train our mind again and again that is why buddhism has three steps knowledge reflection and wisdom knowledge is first we should know the map or address or process of suffering and then we have to reflect on it again and again then by practicing concentration and wisdom living in the present moment with mindfulness we try to reduce the energy of ignorance little by little at once we are unable to overcome ignorance because a lot of times for a long time in our previous lives we have developed ignorance and we have to reduce little by little according to our intelligence dedication and comprehension understanding little by little we should do come it we should reduce ignorance and six senses although arhantas experience through their senses their mind is not fixed in those material things and uh, even arahantas can go to visit their parents we are also going to visit our parents <coughs> we are going to visit our parents who we left we are going to home we are going home we have been left before that is why we may think that the dog is there the tree is in front of the house light is lighting we think everything is like that when we left them but we are ignorant what happens at the moment actually at the moment we have created them inside like you know before we go to the mirror we may think that uh, now my face is very beautiful now i am going to see it to the mirror we are imagine our figure our reflection before we go to mirror but it still it is not there it is not there yet we imagine it according to what we saw before that is the ignorance if you are intelligent to understand this reality actually we know the way how to overcome suffering and all of these twelve steps arise in a second it has no space it has no time and this is the process of arising of suffering that is why buddha says if someone understand this reality this is the way how we understand the dhamma and also this is the way how we realize who buddha is 
Yo padisam padam pasati, so dhammam pasati. He who sees the dependent origination sees the dhamma. He who sees the dhamma sees the Buddha. He who sees the dependent origination sees the dhamma. He who sees the dhamma sees the dependent origination. He who sees the dhamma sees the Buddha. He who sees the Buddha sees the dhamma. This is very important at the very beginning on the path of liberation. Buddha says, the main topic in Buddhism is the Four Noble Truths. Understanding of the Four Noble Truths depends on the understanding of the dependent origination. When we understand this Twelve steps of the dependent origination, we know what is the suffering. What is the suffering? Huh? Dukkha Satya, the noble truth of suffering. Jati Dukkha, birth is suffering. Jarapi Dukkha, decay is suffering. Vyadi Dukkha, sickness is suffering. Maranapi Dukkang, death is suffering. While Buddha explaining these sufferings, finally Buddha has concluded that everything in the five aggregates. Sankite na panchupadana khanda dukkha. In short, arising of five aggregates with ignorance is the suffering. These five aggregates, what they are, Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vijnana, forms, feelings, perception, consciousness, and mental objects. These five things are together. These five things arise together without delay. We can separate them like tea or coffee. We can separate sugar, water, tea. When we see this flower, when we dismiss the sun, the experience is the arising of five aggregates. These five aggregates didn't come to the present from the past. These five aggregates will not go to future, future from the present. These five aggregates arise like this sound at the moment. Like sound, forms, smells, taste, everything arises at the moment. But our ignorance doesn't accept it. Our ignorance always brings us delusion. It says us, before you experience it was here. Don't worry, <laughs> he advises us. And uh, he falls us in delusion. And um, arising of five aggregates, uh, arising of five aggregates, uh, five aggregates, Mm-hmm. Aggregate is the and uh, the yes and uh, the first noble truth suffering. Mm-hmm. The second one, which says samudaya sachye or the reason of suffering, the cause of suffering, the noble cause of suffering. And the closest reason of suffering is craving. But we can't overcome craving until we overcome until we overcome ignorance. You know, dears, when we see far away like water, mirage. 
until innocent deers think the mirage as water, we can't stop them. When they are thirsty, innocent deers run towards the mirage. And uh, we are also like that. We are thirsty of lust until we overcome ignorance. We have any kind of craving or lustful desire. But little by little if we can overcome ignorance, attachment or lustful desire gradually decrease. It doesn't mean that we go away from our duties. Actually, we do our duties better than we did before, after this experience. Now we help others with material things. After this, this experience, we help others, not only material things, but spiritual things. We try to give them intelligence, wisdom. We try to develop their mental conditions in the positive way, in the correct way. That is the proper way if we can help others. When we give something to someone as food, it is beneficial for one or two days. If you give a cloth to a person, it is beneficial for one or few years. If you give someone to a house, if you give some for a house, it is beneficial in his lifetime. But if he can develop one's mental conditions in the positive way, that is beneficial for his entire journey, sansaric journey. We always try to help others with the spiritual things, with the Dhamma. That is why Buddhism says, Sabadhanam Dhammadhanam Jinati. Gift of Dhamma excels all other gifts. And while we are helping others, we are also going forward little by little. How do we go forward? By practicing mindfulness. And craving is the closest reason and first reason is ignorance of suffering. The third one, the noble truth of cessation of suffering. Cessation from ignorance is the truth of uh, Nirodha Satya, Nirodha, cessation. Uh, cessation of suffering. Some of the end, Nirodha Satya. So it's pretty much understanding the ignorance? It means the cessation, the overcoming. Okay. So overcoming the ignorance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Before Buddha has pointed out the path, Buddha has explained the results. Okay. Before you go to a place never you have gone. I should show you the result, the place where you go. While you are imagine the place that you reach, you drive. Before you studied, you imagined, dreamed your future situation, your future goals. Dreaming the future goal you studied hardly. That is why Buddha has pointed out the results before he proclaimed the path of liberation. And the fourth one, the path that leads to get rid of suffering, Magda Satche. Dukkha Satche. Samudya Satya, Nirodha Satya, Magga Satya. The noble truth of suffering and 
the cause of suffering, the cessation of suffering, the path that leads to get rid of suffering. What is the path? Path is the eightfold path with details. Samaditi, right understanding, samasankhapa, right thoughts or intention, samavasa, right speech, samakhamanta, right action, samajiva, right livelihood, samavayama, right effort, samasati, right mindfulness, and sama samadhi, right concentration. This is the path. This is the path. This is the path with details. <coughs> in short, Buddha says, in short, Buddha says, three disciplines. Three disciplines. This eight four paths, eight paths can be included into three. Sila Samadhi Panya. Sila means virtue, concentration and wisdom. Again, Buddha included, Buddha has included all these three things into two. As an intelligent person, you have to practice only two things, which they are concentration and wisdom, or samatha and vipassana bhavana, concentration meditation and insight meditation, in the bottom level. But it says, as an intelligent person, you have to practice only one, wisdom. And always try to keep your attention in impermanence. Please try to increase the duration of time that you practice in permanence again and again. This is your real success. This is your real progress. This is your real dowry. This is your real wealth. This is your real best friend if you love your life and uh, in this situation Buddha says this is the way how we make a refuge Buddha says Atta Deepa Bhikkha Vebhira Tata Sarana dwell with yourself as an island, with yourself as a refuge, with no other refuge. Again Buddha says, Dhamma Deepa Bhikkha Vebhirata Dhamma Sarana no Anya Sarana. Dwell with yourself, dwell with the Dhamma as an island, as a lamp, as a light with as, as a refuge with yourself with the Dhamma no other refuge what is the way how we make a refuge in our life living in mindfulness awareness of our mind and body that's what he said when he was dying right when he was dying, he said, mindfulness is the way... Yes, finally, mm-hmm. his last word, apamadena bhikkhve sampadeta, apamada means mindfulness, living in mindfulness. Don't be diligent. And this is a very great opportunity to overcome the suffering and to achieve intelligence and enlightenment Again and again, they have to develop mindfulness with concentration and wisdom. And uh, when we live in mindfulness, uh, mindfulness, 
automatically concentration and wisdom increase. Because we started this path with the understanding of the dependent origination. <coughs> that is why Buddha says, I proclaim the cessation of suffering for the people who know the Dhamma, who see the Dhamma. Before we start this journey, spiritual journey, we should imagine the destination, results, goal. Whenever we live with mindfulness, seeing, arising and ceasing, at that moment we completely depend on insight. When you think your mom, your dad, your children, your relatives, you know very well in this moment I imagine my mind. That is a second instant that arises at the moment. Outside there are only four elements. Uh, this birth, if you have parents, you may think that this is my mom, I love my mom. How about after he or she dies? Still you can see his or her physical body. What happens to your attachment? Even you don't like to keep her physical body at home a few days. <laughs> As soon as she dies, you want to remove it from house. This is the nature of our life. Even, you know, <coughs> when our mother lives, we like sleep near her. How about after he dies? Do we like to sleep near mom? Even <clears throat> we are afraid of, you know, we are afraid of to go to that room without somebody, someone. <laughs> mm. How about after mom dies and uh, his physical body, his dead body is four days without doing, uh, keeping some medicine inside, uh, in the same room, her body is several days. Mm -hmm. Then you are, you have fear, you are afraid of to go to inside. This is the nature of our life. But uh, we mostly have attachment with the physical body. If you can realize, understand, this reality, before they become this situation, we are so fortunate. Before they die, if we can realize this reality, we can overcome ignorance, delusion, and also we can overcome suffering. And also, we help them more than we did before after this experience. Because we know very well this physical body is impermanent before it goes to decay. We should help them to their mind. And we can control this physical body. Even our bodies one day and goes to decay or death. We can control it. But we can control our mind. We can develop our mind. Then, even though we become old age, sicknesses and death, we can live without suffering. Because we have overcome material things. We completely live 
in intelligence seen the world reality as it is in permanence and for that i wish you all the best if you have any question mr pranando i don't know whether i answered you well <laughs> you were <laughs> and little by little actually we can improve our understanding uh, sometimes uh, you may be confused but continuously you come to the classes and then you can improve your understanding not only knowledge but we should develop the duration of practice time that is also very important <coughs> uh not only you practice here meditation when you are here but try to please try to practice meditation at least 15 minutes per day when you are at home that is very beneficial for you a more understanding okay uh thank you so much for your good attention and today we discuss the dhamma the four noble truth and the understanding of the four noble truth depend on the understanding of the dependent origination cause and effect causality the dependent origination is the heart of buddhism our understanding about what buddha said depends on how far we have understood the dependent origination and especially it is very important to understand the nature of ignorance ignorance means when we experience something we think that experience is here before we experience and also we always think that as the experience it remains always please get the example that we always explain you the mirror Think it keep several times per day that is very important to understand our life our life is completely that we are going to the mirror with some people are repeatedly making the same mistake do you recommend still practicing loving kindness yes some people are doing actually when we practice those things still we are ignorant yes but we do it for future benefits future. yes actually you know uh, when we practice loving kindness we think there are people outside we have accepted the conventional truth in that level in samatha in samatha meditation concentration meditation we believe there is the outside world it doesn't matter but we know very well the second level we practice insight med- meditation by practicing loving kindness meditation although we are in ignorance with the conventional truth but we generate positive energy we develop our loving kindness and also we try to overcome anger which disturb our peace of mind and the main purpose of practicing loving kindness is to overcome anger and also we use it as a technique for concentration meditation with the concentrated mind suddenly that is why we practice insight meditation we reflect on impermanence as the result of practicing loving kindness actually we generate a lot of positive energy that positive energy is useful to go forward on this path and also especially in our day to day life we mostly suffer because of anger when we can overcome anger actually our mind is so pleasant and calm we are always are helpful to others our hands are ready to help others we always see other people like our parents children siblings then our eyes are so pleasant when we drive on the freeway 
we think around people like your children, like your sisters, brothers, parents, then we have no struggles in mind. We always are ready to give a chance to come someone to our lane. It doesn't mean that we are slow. We are also going fast. While we are going fast, we always give other persons to come to our lane. They are invited by us. <laughs> always we keep a space. Then, don't worry. As soon as they come to your lane, suddenly they change the lane. <laughs> when one person comes to your lane, two persons away from your lane because of your loving kindness. Actually, that is true. You can see the result. Okay, thank you so much for your participation and good attention. Day by day, we develop our understanding, comprehension, and day by day, we reach the destination, the liberation, enlightenment, actually, um, listening this message and practicing Dhamma, we get the results throughout our very real life. Okay? All of you are so fortunate, you are so intelligent, and you have received a lot of facilities in this country. Everything that you have received to improve your this understanding. Okay? Thank you again for your attention. Now, uh, we are going to transfer the marriage to our beloved departed relatives that we acquired at the moment. Our uh, Mr. Shan, uh, we bless you uh, from for a long uh, uh, journey and for a far away. Uh, you also participated to this uh, Dhamma sermon. Uh, I wish you a future. I wish uh, you all the best. And by the power of all these merits, may our departed relatives uh, receive these merits and uh, may they attain final bliss of liberation. With that intention, let's transfer these merits to our departed relatives to recite in this tensa. Idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hontu nyatayo. Idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hontu nyatayo. Idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hontu nyatayo. By the power of all these merits, may guardian deities and angels also receive these merits and may they enhance their spiritual energy. May they keep their eye on you too. May they also attain final bliss of liberation. With that intention, let's transfer these merits to guardian deities and angels to recite in the Gatha. Aka Sattha Chabhummatha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyantang Anumoditva Chirang Rakhantu Sasanam Aka Sattha Chabhummatha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyantang Anumoditva Chirang Rakhantu Desanam Aka Sattha Chabhummatha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyantang Anumoditva Chirang Rakhantu Tvansadam by the power of all these merits, may you be well, happy and peaceful. May you all righteous wishes meet with success. Um, may you be mindful and intelligent. And may all of us attain final bliss of liberation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Dukkham pantaja nindukkham. Bayam pantaja nimbayam. <coughs> Sokam pantaja nisoka anto sambe pepanino sadu sadu sadu.